you have entered the realm of adventure. Prepare yourself for tales from beyond the dice. Welcome, travellers. Welcome to Tree Ridge High Mystery Club, a Beyond the Dice production. Luke will still be our DM in Season 2, but for this adventure, I'll be taking Ben, Levi, Luke, Travis, and yourself on a journey to so take a break from our regular broadcast. Tree Ridge High Mystery Club is a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast set in a modern fantasy town called Tree Ridge. I am your dungeon master, and I am Peter. And your mystery team members are Luke. I play Agzagar Jugrathi, a level one half orc barbarian. And um, you can call me Ags for short. Hi, my name's Trav, and uh, I play Brandon Bailorfist. He's a level one tiefling warlock. And uh, you know, I don't like many names, but Bailorfist demons and stuff, so probably shouldn't use them. I'm Ben, I play Albrecht's Longtooth, a level 1 dragonborn bard, and I'm not a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Levi, I play Adelburn Barry, a level 1 bugbear paladin. Oh, and uh, my, my friends, they, they call me Ada. That we do, all my friends. So no last time on Beyond the Dice, so no need to roll those dice. But this time on Tree Rich High Mystery Club. Oh, who did that? Are you just rolling to see how this all plays out? Like, you've got several scenarios. This is like a um, choose-your-own-adventure thing. Isn't all D&D choose-your-own-adventure? Yeah, we didn't make this stuff yeah, up. Yeah, but I thought the DM was doing it, and he already had several, like, preconceived... <clears throat> no, I rolled the dice to be a motherfucker. Super organized. <laughs> <DM>. <laughs> So the opening scene will be you all rocking up to your first day of school. Please, everybody roll a d20. <laughs> you <laughs> jerk. Oh, lovely. Oh, I don't have to go get my Lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. 14. Ag's got a 1. Straight down the line, yeah. I've got a 10. <laughs> Trap. Uh, little Moss 16. Who the hell is Little Moss? <laughs> you have to re-roll that dice now because that was Little Moss's dice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 16 still. I didn't hear you roll. <laughs> <laughs> what? I have a random dice generator. Who still has dice? No, well, that's not legit. All right. So, Luke. Yeah. Tell us how you roll up to your first day of school. Well... Ags, um, his dad, his father, starts work really early in the mornings. He works in the lumber mill in the town. And so Ags gets up around the same time and helps his dad prepare his lunch and all that sort of thing. And Ags's older brother has a car and he zips off without Ags. So Ags rides his old shoddy probably at this point fourth hand bicycle to school one of the rims is bent and sort of wobbles as he comes riding along and he pulls up at the front of the school panting because he's not the most athletic um, half walk around and he looks around for his friends brushes his parted hair out of his eyes pulls his backpack up a little further because it's sliding off his shoulder sweet so I wake up um, pretty, pretty early in my morning. Um, my father always is a fit paladin and he likes doing some exercise before his daily work. So I love waking up before he gets home and smashing out some cartoons because we're not allowed to watch it when he's around. So watch a few cartoons. Then when he gets there, then I'm the dutiful son and I get myself ready for school. But I'm late at most things so I drag it out to as long as possible then jump on my push bike and ride it's a pretty good push bike it is a hand-me-down from my older brother but uh, it's all intact and well serviced and I ride my way into school 
and I get there as the bell is ringing and all the kids are getting into class. Sweet. Ben, here you go. So, I wake up and, you know, it's the first day of school. We used to have a tradition where my sister, Shean, would, would take me, but she's a bit too bit too cool for school now. She's She left early to go hang out with her friends. So, for the first time, I take out the, the rusty the rusty bike out of the shed and ride my way to school with my instrument case strapped across my back. I make it early because I like being early. <laughs> Travis. Brandon's alarm clock goes off and the song starts playing We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. Yes! And, uh, you know, please um, buy his album, by the way. He told me to say that. And <laughs> he, um, his parents come in and they're like, Hey, Brandon, it's time to get up, buddy. Time to go to school. I'm like, oh, uh, uh, uh. and they're like, come on, man. You're really going to kill it today. You know, you're really going to, you're really going to do a great job. You're going to go in there and you're going to break some legs and, you know, whatever else they say when you start school. And he's like, you know, grumbling and mumbling, takes another half an hour to get him out of bed, rolls into his parents like rich ride and they dump him off at school as he kind of scrambles up the steps and walks through the front door scared shitless but trying to pretend like he's too school too cool for school (laughs) too school too schooled for cool (laughs) is that is that just your every morning i this is well is art imitating life or is the other way around i don't know (laughs) his parents drop him off at school (laughs) that is my ringtone (laughs) We didn't start the fire. Yeah, great song. Yeah, they were singing it on The Office today. All right. So it's good. Yeah. All righty. All four of you hear the buzz of the morning bell. You enter the receding wave as everyone floods into the open halls. Tree Ridge High. You scramble past and find yourself at your first class, your morning home group. You file in see a large stone slab of a desk carved with shimmering runes. Standing behind the stone desk and in front of the chalk covered board is a rather sexy? (laughs) No, no, sorry, stocky You see? That could have gone very (laughs) differently, Peter. (laughs) It could have, but I know that you would have problems as playing a character that's with his girl problems and a sexy yeah, teacher. I think I see Balgrix's sack weeping. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I'll let you decide. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Balgrix like covers his mouth and runs out awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> no, come back! Hey! Hey! Ah, oh, he's already gone. But what's that smell? Uh. It smells. It smells metallic, like, like acid. Uh, I'll, I'll go get him. Make sure that we're not late. It smells like the blood of my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so, a rather stocky woman, you assume to be of dwarf lineage. She has brown braided hair, and comfortably wearing a white work shirt with a leather tunic and brown leather skirt. She's holding behind her back a large hammer. Oh! What? You hope it's not for disciplining. She welcomes you in. Most of you take a couple of seats towards the back. She stops Ada and the new girl, Freya. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Tree Ridge High. I'm Miss Jehold. And she waves her hammer. And as she waves her hammer, the runes on light up across the whiteboard and her name is spelt. So her hammer's like a whiteboard marker. <laughs> cool. Pretty much. My eyes go wide. Wider than you think they can go. I, I lean over to Brandon and I'm like, I really hope that she doesn't clobber us with this thing. I've heard things about this school. Like what, do? That like bad stuff happens to you sometimes if you if you be bad. Especially the magic classes. I've heard of getting hammered, but... Man. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, is this the first time we've seen magic used like this in the classroom? Yep. 
Well, there was you had the other classes, your primary school one, but it wasn't as as powerful. This is like this. home group, not like magic for primary school kids. Like this is the first yeah. time we've seen magic used outside of that class. You've seen it used magic before, but you were it hasn't been really used as much. He just needs school. to know how much he needs to lose his shit over this. He throws up. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I want to <laughs> like know. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much does he need to lose his shit? She's showing off, and you should be amazed. I lean forward because I got a one of the double desks behind behind Ags and Brandon. So, what you doing? Never seen in home group before. I don't know, man. Uh, shh. Shh. Oh, okay. We have new, new students, new students to Tree Reach, not just Tree Reach High. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Is it Alderburn? Yeah, yeah, that's that's my name. Um, yep. Yeah, hey, where, where are you from? Tell the class. I start fiddling, nervous with my backpack. Uh, I'm I'm from Redaliadia. Um, we just we just moved over here. Um, are you let to do that, Miss? Uh, is is that okay? Like that's the runes and everything. You, you're allowed to do that, right? In in school, we are allowed to use magic as to teach. Oh, all right, okay. All right. I'm from Rodaliadia, and we don't really have a lot of magic over there. Um, but it's it, that, that's cool. Oh, oh. Hello, Miss, Sir, Miss. Anyway, sit sit down, Ada. Okay, where do I sit? This kid's weird. <laughs> you say that? Yeah, I like I lean like forward to, to tell my friends but not knowing that there's a spare there's, spot next to me there's a spare spot right right next to the, <laughs> the right next to the dragon the dragon born okay, there thanks, thanks miss oh, fucking sorry. racist <laughs> that, that dog I over there rush over <laughs> Is there other dragonborns there? I just go. Put yeah. the fat yeah, owl there next to the, the racist oh, cool. dragonborn. I go next to the only dragonborn oh. with an empty seat. He has. He hasn't met. He hasn't met him. He doesn't before. need to. That's what racism is. As I was explained exactly. <laughs> it's the one dragonborn with an empty seat. As I'm walking over, I drop my bag, fumble over it, and then pick it up, and then sheepishly sit next to him. Oh, just real, really quick, Peter. Anybody? Sorry. Have we yep. have we met Ada yet? No. Okay. Cool. Go. Even though just before... Oh, no, sorry, no, no, you have, you have. You, like, only briefly at the very end of holidays, you hang out okay. a bit. Alright, sweet. Wait, oh, so, so I probably wouldn't have said that this Dragon Ball kid's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you can. That's true, that's true. You You're know, allowed just, to you know, be fickle, stuff. these are teenage relationships. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. And uh, we have to welcome another new student, Freya Roberts. Uh, hi... She's a little elven girl, blonde hair. And she's wearing... Uh, you guys don't actually have a school uniform. So it's just casual clothes, whatever you wish to wear. So she's wearing a black dress and a green tunic over the top. She quickly sc- like scurries in and sits... You guys, so you guys are all seated in a group of four. She sits right of your seats. We miss where's she from? How come you drilled me with all the questions? <laughs> <laughs> you really asked the woman with the giant hammer that question? I, yes, I did. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's actually a bit weird that she asked you a bunch of questions and got you to talk about yourself and then... Uh, like, aren't, aren't, you, aren't you guys part of the mystery club? You should go and ask her and maybe find out uh, some... How, how do you know that, miss? <laughs> Are you aware of all of our extracurricular activities? Is this the whole purpose? Is for us to talk to this girl and find out where she's from? Is this a mystery? Is this the whole (laughs) mystery club thing? Everyone knows about your mystery club. I mean, there's flyers everywhere. Fail. Everyone knows about your mystery club. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was a mystery. Our club. We shouldn't have put that on the flyers. I told you. (laughs) I'm sorry. Say it in, in character. <laughs> he did. What? You sound like a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you Thank talking you. about the teacher? <laughs> no, I'm talking about Travis. <laughs> oh, this is going great. Keep it up, everyone. <laughs> Ags um, leans down and scrambles through his backpack, his light blue backpack. He pulls out a few of his 
school books and um, a canteen. He opens it up and has a sip of some water, sort of puts the the top back on, screws it back on. He shoves his denim jacket, which is slightly too large for him, in the bag as well. And you guys see his dark purple t-shirt with um, his favorite comic book character on there, the Dragon Knight. And um, he turns to Brandon and he's like, Hey, did you bring did you bring my book that I borrowed you? What, what book, dude? Ultra Wolf! Come on, uh, man! Uh, it's, so- it's somewhere. Why? Did you want it today? Yeah, I just got issue 14, man. Come on! I wanted to I wanted to go back and read issues one to thirteen so that when I read fourteen it was all fresh in my brain. I'll bring it tomorrow. Just calm me farm. Okay, good. Thank you. Who's this girl, man? She's like not ugly. <laughs> Wait, can she hear me? <laughs> Ags like turns his head slowly towards Freya and just looks to see if she's paying attention to them and if she heard Brandon say that she looks really nervous and she's kind of like just not she's just like trying to stare away from you guys so you're not sure whether she heard you or not alright what if I roll an insight check Peter to see if I can tell if she heard or not (laughs) you can do that (laughs) do you have a skill (laughs) he's he's jerking you it's not a 20, but it's close. Um, it's a 22. 22. 22 insight. Just to see if she, if I can tell if she heard us or heard Brandon talk about her saying that she's not ugly. As, as those words were spoken from his lips, you saw like a little bit of a, she looked like moved awkwardly. So you, you gauge that she picked up on it. I think she farted. I don't know. Nice. Oh, no. I think she heard you. I'm sure. She, yep, she yeah. heard you. Yep. Oh, crap. Uh, Ags, you know girls don't fart. I didn't know that. Boys. Boys. Keep it yeah. down. Oh. Keep it down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, for, before we start the class, I have, I have to say, we all know the, the code. And obviously magic is not meant to be used outside of outside the school grounds. But... In the school grounds, it's a little bit lenient. We need to need to practice and learn how to use it. And obviously, the, you'll be taking classes using magic, so that is why I am allowed to use this ancient family heirloom to then use magic and display it. And specifically, as I'll be teaching you how to read runes. What's it called? What's it called? Well, yeah, don't like like ancient heirlooms have names. Yeah, like Mjolnir or something. Yeah, or, like yeah. all the comic book characters also, have excuse, named Also, excuse weapons. me, miss, um, do you have to do a roll? Because in um, Oaksie, <laughs> uh, our teacher always did a roll and called out our name and stuff every every day. We've got no time for that. We but ain't got, ain't got time for that. <laughs> we do, <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> no, we do a magic roll that. here at Tree Reach High. <laughs> So how do you know when we turn up for school and stuff? Like, do I have to be here? Because this isn't really a class, is it? This is a class. I'm going to teach you how to read dwarven runes. I, I thought, thought this was home group. I thought yeah, was, isn't this yeah, home this group? Yeah, this is home group. This is home group and your first class. Ah. Oh. Oh. So you're our first teacher? Yep. I didn't know that I signed up for runes. Well, if you, you want to find here, out what the name of this now. hammer is, you're going to need to be able to read it. Ooh. I was, I, I was pretty good at... um. In, at school in primary school so I, I reckon I should have this in the bag as you are starting to learn how to read runes as she describes across the board hey Brandon look I wrote bum in runic <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a dwarven bum face oh So it's lunchtime, the bell rings, you grab your bags and you run out to have some lunch. Now describe your characters and how you're sitting down in the grounds. We'll start with Lois again. Is it like a big cafeteria room? 
No, no, you're you're out. You you've already like you you brought your lunches. Oh, okay. And you're sitting outside on some benches, and there's another smaller tree there. All right. Well, Ags. Now that we're outside, he's got his um, like his acid wash denim jacket on. It's a little bit too big for him. It probably wasn't originally his. Um, yeah, like I said before, you can see his dark purple t-shirt and then a big logo and um, character of uh, the Dragon Knight uh, stands there with his sword pointing in the air, looking all victorious. He's got a little um, white uh, sort of sports watch and... Um, wearing khaki pants that are held up by a black belt and on the black belt it has a buckle that's shaped like the Dragon Knight's helmet and he's got some dirty white sneakers. He's sitting there and he's unwrapping his um, peanut butter and jam sandwich from the foil and he has like an apple and he's looking at it and it looks a bit warped and old and he just like tucks that away back into his bag and continues to unwrap his sandwich takes a big bite and um he says oh man my my tusks are always getting peanut butter stuck on them you gotta you guys gotta tell me if i have peanut butter on them okay hey um you're gonna eat that apple Oh, I was gonna ask. Yeah, it's all. You gonna eat the apple? We could go house. It's really bruised and bad. And he takes it out and he throws it to um, adult. Damn it! I try and catch it. Brandon, you can. You've got. I bet you have apple trees at your big house. And he um, once again brushes his parted black hair away from his eyes. They're not bruised and battered like my soul. Wait, wait, Brandon, do you want you want the good half and I'll have the dodgy bit? It's all right. No, you have it. I don't care. Whatever. All right. I eat it really quickly and then start opening up my sandwich. It's in a bread bag and I've got a peanut butter sandwich. I'm like, oh, yeah, so Ags, um, I'll tell you if you got peanut butter on your on your tusk. So you just tell me if I get on any, any on my whiskers and, yeah, no, nah, that'd be good. Deal. Sweet. Mung into my peanut butter sandwich. I've got no jam. What do you look like? Oh, I'm like a six-foot hairy bugbear. I've got... um. Cargo shorts with like all the pockets. Yes. So as wherever you can think there's a pocket, oh, it's there. And I've just got random things in there. I've got a half rolled up old comic book in one. I've got um have pulled my lunch out of one of my other pockets, and then I got my like house keys and things, uh, and my my bags. It's it's just a a normal school bag, and I've just got a a t-shirt with a. It's definitely from my older brother, and it's just got a cheap brand name on it, like. Trees. <laughs> Trees? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're working through any personal trauma there, Levi? Mm. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you need to talk? No, no I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into my character. <laughs> All right, Ben. Brandon is like, oh, oh. Uh, whatever. Who cares about food, Mike? Are you not going to eat your sandwich? You wanted the freaking apple, man. Yeah, come on. Yeah, what do you bring out? Because I don't deserve anything. I didn't bring anything. Like, I have money for Tuck Shop, but whatever. I'll just save it for later and then buy comics. What do you mean you don't deserve anything? No, I thought you didn't like comics. I don't. Like, I buy them ironically. <laughs> well, so, if you... What have you got? So, Brandon has black hair combed over one side of his face, obscuring one eye and most of one horn. Um... His tiefling horns stick out kind of to the back and he has long pointy ears. He is wearing a plain black tee um, and black, not skinny jeans, but they're not baggy either. And um, he's just sort of leaning up against the tree, crossing his arms, trying to look disinterested. What color um, of skin does he have tiefling wise? Is he purple or red or? Uh, It's kind of like a... A brownie purple. Cool. Kind of lightish. Yeah, that's me. We got one more. So, Balgrix sits down and pops open his little little lunchbox. And he pulls out like a little, like a, like a little fish. But it's not cooked. 
he just starts eating it like it's a raw fish he just he just brought from home so it smells really Ooh. bad <laughs> so we smelt it all class well like it was it was in like a sealed thing it, it doesn't smell like off it just smells like fish dude i hate it when people bring like tuna to school it stinks man i need this it's gonna make me grow big and strong like other dragonborn yeah, but who's going to want to kiss you with that breath? My God. Who's going to want to kiss you with your face? <laughs> yeah. It's always it's frowning. <laughs> so, I have to hang out with you guys. <laughs> so, um, Balgrix chomps down on that, on that fish, on that nice piece of fish, and then he awkwardly gets out a big chunk of big chunk of cork and he like he just kind of puts it in his mouth and just like puts it into the side on his acid sack <laughs> so it's like absorbing the excess as he's like you know as he's developing he's uh he's 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 leaking a bit so he needs a bit of a bit of, a bit of corking <laughs> not that way you t- i mean like he likes a good cork <laughs> good, good corking, right in the mouth. Um, <laughs> what? It's cork in his mouth. What? I, I did not think about it that way, Luke. When I thought about this, I'm like, he needs something like you know, some. <laughs> I was gonna say a bit of wood. <laughs> oh. Like Howard, you know, he's got he's leaking acid. That's not healthy. That's not for other people. So he needs to like absorb it and like get it, yeah, soak it up somehow. Um, so as he's chewing it, he says, "I don't understand why the Dragon Knight isn't Dragonborn. I mean, it's in the name, Dragon Knight. Why does he have to be, you know, human?" Um, it's I think it's because like a, a dragon blessed him with the power of the dragon knight and he turns into a dragon sometimes but um yeah i I guess it's kind of true but i don't know that's yeah it's a it's a good question um if we ever meet um the the creator um i'll i'll definitely ask him for you um it's like you know not 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 saying you can't be a dragon knight or anything yourself Cause you're like a dragon, basically. Exactly. I just need a sword, and then I would be like a dragon knight or like a dragonborn knight, whatever. I don't know if we can bring swords to school, but um, you can hold my trench shovel if you want. I've got it in my bag. Why'd you bring your trench shovel? In case we need to go on an, an adventure or something and like investigate <laughs> some things. It's a good idea. You bring it to school all, all the time? I bring my shovel, I bring my canteen, I bring a rope and a torch, and I also bring my tape recorder and obviously my school books um, and my lunch. I bought lunch money. That's it, dude. Like, you yeah. need to stop. Did you want to go and buy something? Or like, what? I told you what I'm going to do with that money. Just relax. Okay, well, you keep mentioning food. Keep mentioning your trench shovel. <laughs> Did you, you want to describe your character, Ben? Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> Balgrick, so he's a dragonborn, as discussed. But he is a copper dragonborn. So, he's most of his scales are very, very dark kind of copper towards... His, um, not horns, but like the the sharper edges of his of his of his head, um, and around kind of his frill, um, it's more light. It, it becomes a lot lighter. Kind of in the right light is more golden, um, but most of his most of his body is is that kind of dark brown, um, and as it comes to the to his snout and his nostrils, it becomes darker almost almost black like kind of it kind of looks like a i mean it's not a, a dog's nose but it kind of goes into that like very dark very kind of like wet look um he also has two like little pronounced fangs on the side of his on the side of his snout his snout's wider like it's wide and and not as long it's like you know a, a short like crocodile kind of snout 
Um, he's also not very, he's not very big like other Dragonborn. His age would be much larger, and like a lot of the bigger Dragonborn become, you know, important on the sports teams and the football teams because they're big, but he's kind of more lanky. Like, he's kind of tall, but he's, he's more wiry. So, Luke. Yeah. So, Ags has just started his sandwich, right? Yeah, he's, and then he's taking a couple bites. Taking a couple bites. You suddenly see this shadow... <laughs> Like at your feet as you're talking, you see a familiar pair of red runners, the tracksuit pants, his favourite red and white leather men's jacket, with the skull ball, skull crushers logo sewn into it. His tusks protrude from the bottom of his jaw, and he plays with his lip ring. Urada Junior, your big brother. Oh no! Wait. Oh, yeah, eggs. He looks like you. Uh, hey. Horodar quickly combs back his black mohawk, hides the comb in his sweatband. Behind him is the rest of his gang, of his new gang. Picking his teeth with a sharp, jagged blade, his cane blood tooth. He is all black. Black skinny jeans, black belt and armbands that are spiked, ripped black shirt. He has a chain dangling from from his belt to his right pocket. You notice an eye patch, but it's covered with a long fringe. It's all black, except for the, the tips are uh, fluoro green highlight. You feel a little prejudice, as it seems he feels the stereotypical hobgoblin. He wears his tribal tattoos on both arms. The Blood Tooth Clan. They were known for their blood craze. Now the one who ties the trio together, the worst of them, Dreyus Goldenweave. His long white hair is tied back in a ponytail. His eyes are closed and he's wearing biker gloves on both of his hands, which are resting on his knees as he sits cross-legged on the ground behind the two. You see his ripped jeans and his leather jacket that he typically wears and his open white shirt. Hey brother, what's this then? Can you find some real friends? Um, they... They are really my friends, if that's what you're asking, Urda. Um, he, hey, did you... Did you want something? Did I forget to pack something in your lunch? Well, you might have packed it, but I don't have it. I'm gonna take yours. Um... You don't need it. You're not gonna be... You don't need to be big and strong like me. You're not going to grow any bigger than you already are, you little runt. Um, oh, I'm really enjoying this sandwich. And you guys notice that um, Ags is like, maybe just hit five foot tall. Maybe. It could be just the fact that he's wearing sneakers that have quite a large, you know, sole on them. But he's pretty small for a, um, a half orc. And he, um, he looks down at his sandwich and he looks back up and he... Size. <sighs> Fine. You can have it. I don't have the apple. That's already gone. He hands a sandwich towards his big brother. Erda takes it and he gobbles it down. Did you uh, tell your friends you're from a noble house of orc? Um, it never really came up in conversation. Erda's like stretching. He's like posing, stretching his muscles and showing off. Look, you're from the poor house of orc. Man. What, what did you say? Nothing. He didn't say anything. He didn't hear you. Just mumbled. He mumbles a lot. Yeah, fuck you. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. You can't even call yourself like a half orc. You must have like be like half orc, half worm or something. Hey, uh, one day I'll be big and strong like the like the dragon knight. And Ags gets to his feet and he pokes himself on the chest towards his t-shirt. You'll see. And then he like goes wide-eyed and realises that he, um, you know, that he spoke back to his big brother and he sits back down on the bench and he um, sort of, like, grabs onto his bag. So Kane, like, he looks really crazed. He's got a bit of, like, drool, like, dripping down from his little tusks as well. Little hobgoblin. And he's like, Hey... Maybe you can have 
Some food that I brought instead. I was gonna feed it to my pet rat. I would so much like to see my little pet rat squirm, but I'd rather see you squirm. You should you should totally eat this sandwich. And he like gets open his bag and pulls out this it looks like a like a sickly coloured meat. Like it's just off smells a bit. You can smell it from here. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, eat it. it. Might make you stronger, like you said. Oh, I'm not. Uh, you know what? On second thoughts, I'm like really full right now. Oh, look, see, my belly's crazy full. <laughs> right, guys, I I ate like that apple before, didn't I? And he turns to you, to you guys, and yeah, uh, yeah, you ate a lot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Rhoda picks you oh. up by like your collar. <laughs> Come on, please. Eat it. Wait, wait. Please. Eat it. Oh, I, I can eat it. I can eat it for you. It, it doesn't smell too bad. Oh. No, it's okay, Adel. Adel, I can eat it. And I, um, I roll my eyes and I say under my breath, I'm going to regret this. I walk up to the hobgoblin and I slap the sandwich out of his hand. Whoa. Oh. What, are you, what are you doing? I stand up. I said, probably something that I'm going to regret later, but whatever. You see Dre come out of his trance in the back and he like stands up and starts walking towards you guys just just as the bell rings. Ah, uh, Urida, don't you have those tryouts today? Oh, damn it. If I don't go now, I'll be late and they won't let me try out. Oh, you rich kid, you'll make you regret those words later. You're saved by the bell this time. Oh. That was a really good TV show in the late 80s and early 90s. <laughs> it's like, it's like you're systematic bullies and you're like, but we've got to go to class now, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't want to be late. So it'd be like gym or something. That's true. If my teacher had a runic hammer, I'd probably want to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Urda, that... That was the bell. You can 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 you put me down now so I'm not late? He throws you down. Oh, ow! Now I got dust on my jacket. We'll see you after school. Before he turns away, I flip him off. He doesn't notice. I got my eye on you, devil boy. Roll stealth. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks away. Yeah, burn in hell. See you later. Brandon, why'd you do that? Yeah. You know how dangerous they are. He's being a jerk, man. Man, when I get home, he's gonna... Yeah, he's gonna... He's gonna beat eggs. Let's just go to class. I'll pick up the sandwich and give it to Smith. Is it really horrible? <laughs> it smells... It, it's like, you smell it, and it just reeks of just bile. Like, actually, it would probably kill someone who ate it. Yeah, I don't eat bile, so I'm gonna uh, take it to the rubbish bin as we go to class. So as you're walking down the halls of Tree Reach, you hear screaming of girls. Like what kind of screaming? Like the, yeah, or like the, they're being attacked by a giant. Squealing or happy? like go- golden axe when the children are running away and they're like, <laughs> hey, Woo! Hey. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Peter didn't say it was the squealing of some hogs. <laughs> the squealing of yeah, who did that? <laughs> It was like, like deliverance. Dude, that's what they sound like in Golden Axe, though. They sound like <laughs> screaming demons. I'm going to elbow eggs in the ribs and go, a, a, a mystery? Yeah, this could be a mystery. Want to wanna find out? Hey, fellas, can you hear that? It's the calling of uh, something. Uh, let's, let's, do you want to check it out? Yeah, let's go check it out. You better bring your shovel. What, to bury some people. <laughs> Can we like follow the sound, or do you want us to make a check? Or yeah. Something? So the girls, um, you, you see the like because they're coming. You see the whole couple of girls run past you. One goes, oh, I'm, "I'm gonna go. We go find one of the teachers, but but you need you need to go help her. The new girl. The new girl. Where? They saw them like run. They're running. A couple of them run out of the girls' bathroom. Oh, oh man. we can't oh. go in there, guys. Yeah, no, we can't. It's illegal. It's against, it's against the honor code, dude. Ada, isn't it illegal? 
Like, we're gonna get arrested if we go in there. We can't go in there. Yeah, no, like, for sure. We can't go in there. Like, I could look, look over through the window, but I, I'm not even going game to do that. What if we... Is there a way to get around the law? Like, if we cover our faces and we can't see anything, then it's not um, illegal? Just yell out. See who's in there. See if, if we can help. Ags, um, gets his shovel and he pushes the door open and he, he yells, Hello? Uh, guys, guys, come on. Oi, is anyone in there? Can, can we come in? We heard screaming. So you don't hear any more screaming coming from inside. I'm, I'm going in. There's no one in there. It's okay. Just make sure no girls follow me. Right. I walk into the... I go through the door. Uh, Ags, Ags follows and he's like holding his shovel and he's shaking. As you enter, one of the taps is overflowing and water is flooding across the floor. Between the rows of the cubicles and the sinks, kneeling in the middle of the expanding puddle is Freya. She is facing a man. He looks a bit like Freya, but he's human. He has short cut brown hair. He's wearing a lab coat. His hands are in his lap and he sits cross-legged. Iron manacles run tightly around his wrists and ankles and chains run from them into the water disappearing at its surface. Dad? Dad? What's going on? Where are you? Are you okay? Mm hmm. Her father looks up. Who are you, child? What are you doing here? Dad? How are you here? It's me, Freya. Do you not recognize me? How, how have you done this? This room has been sealed. But you, Dad? But you found a way. Tell me where you are. I'll come. I'll find you and get you out of there. Child, come here. Come to father. Let me hold you. Freya moves to put her arms around her. Her father, and as she does, his body vanishes like mist. Dad, no, Dad, come back, Dad! She sits there weeping. What the hell is that? I run towards the tap, the faucet that's broken, and I try to block the water coming this out. Great. At this point, you're like, water con conservation is important. <laughs> as you, it's a drought, so man. as you put, so you're are you blocking with your hands or your finger? Or? Yep, that's the idea. So as you do, it like spurts you in the face as you try and like close it up. He got ghost water on him! He got ghost water on him! I just keep trying to stop the water. Agsa uh, puts the shovel in his bag, dropping his bag to the ground. He, uh... Um, you won't roll an intel check. What? An intel check? Oh, I got a six. Okay, yeah. You continue to not actually turn off the faucet. You just let it, like, just keep... And you're trying to plug it up with your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's not worked out basic, basic levers and pulleys. That's next period. Yeah, yeah. Ax runs up to the, the girl. He says, hey, <laughs> hey, are you, are you okay? What was that? You said it was your dad. It looked like a ghost. It, it was my dad. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Why, why didn't he know who I was? I, I don't know. Is your dad at home? He's not at home. He's, he's at work. He... He works with with the government. You, you know those, you know that the the, the people, the, all those people that came in, they're like soldiers and government people. They came into town. You, you've seen them around. Um, I don't pay a lot of attention to adult stuff, so I'm not really sure. Um, quit, hey. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but can we get out of here? It's really illegal for us to be in here right now. As as you say that, as you say that, like, the door bursts open. Oh, this is the point you bring it up. And you, you will say... <laughs> <laughs> I told them to stay outside and guard. Uh, ba Baldrix was still outside. I never said I went in! <laughs> and you see your dwarven teacher rush in. Yeah, She's I, was too, I was too nervous. I don't want to get arrested. What's what's going on here? I don't know how to what's, stop the tap. Happening? The water keeps coming out, and I don't know how to stop it. It's a, it's a miss. She was just yelling. leans over and then like t pushes the faucet, like the handle down, and it turns off. Oh, oh, well, thanks, miss. That you're a champ. Thanks, miss. I start walking outside the room quickly. You boys, boys, get out of here. I'll look uh, after. Uh, miss, there was like a ghost uh, or something really weird. Uh, but, okay, bye. We're, are we gonna get arrested? This is not cool. I can't be arrested on my first day of school. That rhymed? 
I didn't mean it. <laughs> it's it's okay. The 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 paladins are coming, but it's it's not it's not your fault. You didn't. There's lots of magic. Something happened, but it's okay. You guys go back to go go back to your class, and I'll look after Freya. Ghost dad. And then I walk out. You're the ghost dad. <laughs> This is not the time to clarify. <laughs> you ghosting? Ex, um, exits out. the the ladies' room, out into the hallway. All right, so you you all go back back to your classes, and the rest of like the day goes by relatively normal. Do we see Freya after like during that school day? That day where she's in the toilets, he found her. Yeah, yeah. And then she was she's not there at the end of home group, like the last class, whatever you call it. And um Yeah. We probably talk about it after we're like, I bet she's in the office. I bet she's dobbing on us. Well hopefully she's not. She seemed kinda nice. It's her first day. Maybe she doesn't want to get in trouble either. Yeah, guys, you know what? I've been thinking about it all day. Like I think we do have a mystery on our hands. Why weren't there any urinals in the toilet there? <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I what do you mean there were no urinals in the toilet? They didn't have any urinals. There were no urinals. Just like the hand basins in all these stalls. Like heaps of them. Is, is this a history? What? <laughs> guys, guys, this this is just too good. I'm going to have to delete all my plot devices. The case of the missing <laughs> urinal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. She, she did also have like a ghost dad who was like in chains and then she broke into a room. So like that that's also interesting. Yeah. I wonder... It might even be more interesting than the lack of urinals. Maybe... I don't know. Hopefully our dad's okay. Like... Uh, I'm kind of... Like, I'm new to town. Are ghosts... Are they normal? Like... I have never seen a ghost in my life. We thought we saw one. Um... But we... It wasn't really a ghost. It was just the moonlight reflection on a window. Yeah. Remember there was that time where there was just a sheep flapping in the wind? Yeah, that was spooky as heck. So, the rest of your class is pretty normal, and you don't notice Freya, she doesn't come back to the final class, final home group. You go home, nothing really occurs over the next few days. You guys plan to maybe meet up, and you go to the next day of cl- uh, school, Freya's not there, she hasn't turned up, missed your ho- hole, she doesn't really, she kind of notices and asks you guys if you've seen her, but the last time I saw her was when we left her with you. Oh, no, it should be it should be fine. I'll call her house. We'll sort it out. So the rest of class goes by. Nothing really happens. And then next day comes by. She's still not there. So you guys plan to like maybe you go go to someone's house and maybe group up. Whose house or where do you want to make your your home base for mystery solving. I reckon that there's like some sort of abandoned something that we go to, like a like an old a shack on the edge of town or something. Yeah, or like an old mail van that's down by the river or something. Yeah, that's burnt out. Yeah, and we have all we have some stuff in there. Yeah, it's like males only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So, you guys are. Uh... Your school's finished, the bell's gone, and you're making your way to the mystery club slash van. How do you guys get there? Pushy. Yeah, ride right on my push bike with the slightly bent wheel. Can I grab a drink on the back um, bars with Ags? Yeah. Well, you sure can. Oh, Ags, if you're going to dink someone, I think you should have a better bike. I, it's the only bike I've got, man. You, Come on. You can borrow mine. Um, I'll, I'll ride yours, and you ride mine if you want to dink. I don't. I don't think I can. Well, why don't you just? Oh, uh, because I don't think it'll work. Why? I don't know how to. I don't. I don't know how to. He's saying he's fat. You can. <laughs> I'm not fat, but I just don't know how to dink. Wait, what's what's dinking? Dinking's where you. Dinking's when they sit on the handlebars, and it's really. It's just. It makes a hard job harder. So I can't do it. You've made this whole thing hard, dude. Just get off but the you, bike. Okay, just borrow. You borrow my you bike. Make a hard job harder. Can't, I'll run. Can't you? Hey. Can't you ride a bike? You said it makes a hard job harder. Are you saying it's hard to ride a bike? Oh, when someone's sitting on the handlebars, it is. No, it's no. I'm good. But if he's he's already got a dent bent tire, so it's gonna make his job harder. Doesn't matter. Let's oh, just go. Okay. Jump on. 
we've got a mystery to solve. You know, um, I was thinking, should we try and find out where Freya lives and go and check and see if she's okay? Is that a yes? So are, we at the, are we at the club figuring this first bit out or are we going to try and do this en route? Us three are en route. No, I think we should make it to the club because then see what the other guys think. I'm on, I'm on the way too. I'm on the bus. I'm the only one getting dings. All right, so you're... you're... <laughs> so you guys are all riding your bike and to get to this van, you have to kind of go through through the forest up one of the main roads out of bit, bit outside of town and it's a bit of a windy road up a bit of a slight you know bit of a hill and as you're going you're riding around you hear a noise of a car and some loud music and you see behind you there's two lights it's getting a bit dark and you see there's two lights and you see this big truck and he's got you know those I don't know what the truck's called, but the one of those ones where they're, it's all open-topped. It's all like a, it's a Humvee. It's like open-topped, and there's like, you see the black mohawk, green orc, standing. Oh, you mean like a, like a Jeep Wrangler with the back, like the back thing open? Yeah, so like it's got the main, it's just got like the windscreen and then the rest of it's open up. But it's like a four-wheel drive sort of thing. A jeep. Yeah, like a jeep. Yeah, jeep wrangler. Oi, axe. Uh... And so they're driving, and then he sits down, and they kind of speed up, and they're almost like they're driving you guys off the side. They basically push you guys off the side of the this cliff. Quit it. Like to a cliff. Or a dark stop, man. And they keep playing, and they're throttling, and eventually, you guys. They run you off the side of the road. And you guys tumble down into the the forest on the side of this, down a little bit of a hill. Oof. I jump off my push bike before I fall down the whole hill. Brandon, you're gonna go. We tumble down. You guys tumble down. Tumble down. How how damaged are we? How how cut it's up? Not, it's not too big of a like a incline on the side of the road. Like it's a bit scraped up with the bushes and everything, but and even your bikes are pretty fine. But the the jeep stops for a bit, and you hear the engine still running, and then like you hear the doors open. But luckily, you hear the sound of the paladins of a cruiser coming in. They're like, oh, oh shit, let's get let's get going. And they jump back in the car, back in back in their jeep, and they drive off. Well, this could be my dad. Let's let's go say hello. But we don't have to. Eggs, you feel someone grab. Like your hand go around the back of your neck and over your mouth, and you're pulled into into the forest. Hey, paladins! Let's go. Let's go see if it's your dad. Yeah, right. Let's go. So the the cruiser slows down and sees you guys kind of climb out of the side of the embankment of the, of the forest. I'm waving. Hey, hey, hey! What are, what are you kids doing here? So oh, is my dad in the car? We were on, we were riding our push bikes, and then um, some hooligans. I don't know who they were. They pushed us off the road. I saw them. You suddenly notice someone's missing, and it's Ags. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not He's like, wait, I'm not. <laughs> oh, they were. I don't. Hang on. Where, where's Ags gone? Wait, wait, Brandon. Where's Ags? Uh, uh. Do you have another friend? Yeah. We have at least one more friend, dude. Ags! Definitely, we got heaps of friends. They're just not here right now. <laughs> Hold on. Was he just here? Yeah, no, like like 10 seconds ago, sir. He was just here. His dad's, dad's not in the car office. Oh, okay, no, 10 seconds ago, and we just fell down the hill, and he's here. I can't see him. He might just he, he might just be nervous around the paladins. But where's his push oh. bike? Ags, you're lying down. You got this hand over your mouth. You see this... Not sure if it's a mask or if it's like skin or some sort of paint, but basically it looks like like bark, trees, two dotted eyes peeping through. And this whole body looks like it's covered in kind of like leaves, kind of really blends in with the surrounding. But you see this one thing he's holding in his hand is a spear and he lifts it up. You think he's gonna jab you? Is my is his hand over my mouth? 
So he's got, he's got no, no hand over your mouth at the moment. He lets go and then he like pulls this death spear down as you scream. Oh, please don't kill me. Please. And we'll end it there. Oh, that's really mysterious. Well then, I hope you enjoyed the first volume of Tree Reach High Mystery Club. I'm Cross, the Interdimensional Demon Bard, and I'll be telling more of the Tree Reach stories next time. Thank you all for downloading this new episode, this new mini-series, Tree Reach High Mystery Club. Thanks for having a listen to this new exciting adventure. Website www.beyondthedice.com is our website. First time. Our Instagram is pretty fun. We take D&D, RPG and nerdy pictures. Check them out there at Beyond the Dice on Instagram. You can tell it's his first time. Levi, come on. You meant to say oh. only listen to no, the podcast. No, you, oh, you got all this. We, every time we say nerdy pics. <laughs> That's why I put you in see what you did. Oh, you did failed, it properly. Failed the test. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so enthusiastic. If you do it poorly so, the first time, we also have I don't a Facebook. care about you, Ben. <laughs> that's not sad, man. Why are you so I care about you, Ben? Ben. Ben, I care. I know you do, Luke. So he's got to get these out of his emo yeah, you stage. You care too damn much. Travis got to get out of his emo stage and re- into his normal emo stage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we also have a Facebook page where you can check out our Facebook page <laughs> for all the news at facebook.com you can, you can tell that he's been off Facebook for ages it's just like we have a Facebook page at Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> facebook.com forward slash btdpod psst hey psst come here come over here yeah nope. come here do you have some time oh. if you do give us a review uh, now if you, if you jump onto whatever medium you use to download this podcast or any other podcast uh, and just give us a review, um, chuck, chuck some comments in there, what you do like, what you don't like. Um, it'll really help us grow our listener base and reach more people. Um, seeing that those numbers go up oh, yeah. just makes us more enthusiastic about doing this. So the more enthusiastic we are, the more... <laughs> The, the, the more energy enough. Travis may or may not have to do the outro. And also save him from the back of a van where a man There's is no van. A spear. No van. There's no van. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> candy Am man. We, we lit. Our campsite's the candy van. We, that's where we have our mystery shack. Right. Mystery shack. Yes, it's the mystery shack now. I love it. Yeah. All right. But there's definitely somebody with a spear <laughs> threatening eggs. The mystery van. It's not nice. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> please give us a review. Please give us a review and please say, <laughs> please save Ags now. Stranger danger. Hashtag save Ags 2019. Thanks. See you all next time. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Maybe we'll you see. should roll a, uh, <laughs> an arcana check. <laughs> no, I don't say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. You're breaking the fourth wall. That is a good point. What time of year is it? What season? Yeah. It's like, what colours am I wearing? Is it before or after Labor it Day? It is spring. Well, how, this is like America, so we don't have to wear, like, do we, have to, we don't have to wear a school uniform, so how far do we have to not wear a school uniform? I have to wear clothes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's the limit. <laughs> Setting low standards. <laughs> you suddenly notice someone's missing. Huh? And it's Ags. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're not there. He's like, wait, I'm not? Huh?